gradient puzzles are too easy. So let's mix three of them together. Is this a bad idea? Am I gonna regret this in a few hours? Oh man, here we go. No going back now. so many colors. <laughs> What have I done? I'm just looking at all of these colors and I'm like, this might have been a mistake. <laughs> I'll just take a nap right here. <laughs> Actually, ow, that is cardboard poking into my cheek. Okay, back to the video. All right, so these puzzles are the Gradient Therapy Collection from the small independent puzzle company, Soonness. Soon, who runs the company, has been so kind and sent me all these puzzles. I've been so excited to do them because these are like the most beautiful puzzle boxes I have ever seen in my entire life. So here is a look at the three pictures that we're putting together. Individually, obviously, none of these would be all that hard, but... <laughs> Clearly, I made it really hard on myself and mixed them all together. When I told Soon that this is what I was planning to do with her puzzles, she was like, um, okay, have fun, I guess. I mean, this was over email, so I'm just assuming that's what her voice was gonna sound like. But I did give myself a little out. So previously, before mixing them, I did take two different colored Sharpies and I put orange dots on the back of one puzzle and purple dots on the back of another puzzle and then no dots on the third puzzle. So if this really does turn out to be like actually impossible, I, I can separate them back out. I have learned my lesson from previous videos. All right, I guess it's time to just get into it. You know what's coming. We're gonna make a rainbow. All right, I just finished the sorting. Look at how beautiful that is. It took just about exactly an hour and a half. But before I get started on the puzzle itself, let me tell you about my outfit. So today's video is sponsored by ThreadUp. And this is genuinely so exciting to me because Besides puzzling, obviously, my second favorite hobby is secondhand clothes shopping. So if you don't know, ThreadUp is an online thrift and consignment store that sells secondhand clothes at majorly discounted prices. We love a discount here. 
who doesn't love a discount? And what's great about shopping secondhand online is that you can filter by brand, by size, by color. So my outfit today is from ThreadUp. This blouse that I'm wearing is from a company called Ambience, and then these jeans are from The Gap. Okay, so this shirt is from American Eagle, and it just like fits me perfectly. You're gonna be seeing this in a lot of my future videos. The jeans are from a company called Blank NYC, and I love that they have this embroidery on them. I really wanted embroidered jeans, and that's one of the little check boxes that ThreadUp lets you filter by. And then I'm wearing uh, slippers right now because I'm inside, but if I was gonna go out, I got these sneakers from the Ugg brand, and I got such a deal on these. The retail would have been 140. I got them for $48.99. And then one of my favorite thrift hacks is to buy clothes out of season. So it is way too warm in LA to wear this sweater right now. I am honestly really hot right now here in the apartment. But this is like my perfect sweater. It has a really wide neck. It's black and white striped. <laughs> like I'm gonna be wearing this all the time this winter. Oh, and it's from American Eagle. I don't think I said that. So I hope you liked my little clothing haul. If you wanna try out ThreadUp for yourself, you can get 35% off your first order and also free shipping with my code PUZZLES35. All the details will be down in the description. And now let's get back to our puzzle. All right, it is a brand new day. I decided that after sorting 3,000 pieces yesterday, that that was enough for one day. But today I'm actually gonna start putting this thing together. So you might look at this and wonder like, where do you even start? And luckily all three designs have these straight edges where two colors meet each other. So those are obviously the first pieces that I'm gonna look for. You can see a lot of them sort of poking out. They're, they almost look like confetti in the rainbow. It's so pretty. So by doing those first, I should be able to get a pretty good outline of all three puzzles and then I can just fill in all of the colors. Should be easy enough. I think I was being um, <laughs> a little dramatic yesterday, but we'll see how it actually goes.
All right, so I'm about an hour and 15 minutes in. You can see I have the outline of the bean and the cube or the rectangle um, pretty much finished. Just look at how beautiful this table is looking. I am obsessed. This is exactly what I wanted when I had the idea for this video. So obviously this one was pretty easy because it was the only one that had curved lines. And then for this one, you can see that all of the breaks are kind of in the middle of the puzzle piece. But this is the third one where I still have to do all these outlines. And you can see that all of the line breaks are basically on the edge of the puzzle pieces. So I think this one is gonna be a little bit trickier to put together, but that's what I'm gonna work on next. Also, I will say that the puzzle piece shapes are not quite as unique as I would have hoped. I definitely had to do a little rearranging already. It's fine for the diagonal lines or the curved lines, but for these where all you have is like the gradient of colors to put them in order, um, I definitely had to rearrange some of those pieces in there. And so now I'm getting a little nervous about when I get to all of the solid colored pieces, but we're gonna worry about that when we get there. For now, let's get this third one outlined out. So here's where I'm at after about an hour. Um, it's not looking quite as clean as I would have liked. I only have one complete column. And that's because the color line is right on the cut line. So, so many of these pieces just have the tiniest little sliver of color. So it's been really hard to spot all of those from all of these pieces that I have left. So I actually think I'm just gonna leave that for now because I need to get some of these pieces off of the board because they're all just getting mixed up as I keep pushing them forward. So looking at the three designs, the color that actually shows up the least is probably this bright neon yellow because you only see it here, a little bit up here, and really nowhere in this one. So I think that's going to be the color that I pull first. After that, there's actually not a whole lot of green, just a little there, a little in here, and then just a tiny bit on these columns. So I think I'm gonna work from the yellow over to like the greens and the blues, and then there's a whole lot of pink, so I'll probably leave all of the pink for last.
You guys, this is so fun. I feel like one of those chess masters who can play like 10 games of chess at once. <laughs> So as you can see, I've made really good progress on all of the yellows and I started moving into some of the greens and teals. It actually hasn't been quite as hard as I thought it would be because there are subtle color differences between each of the three puzzles. So for example, this kind of muddy green color really only shows up right here and then just a tiny bit in here. But on this puzzle, this is the only one that has any kind of diagonal gradient. The rest, it's all just, you know, straight up and down or to the side. So I don't know how much it's gonna come across on camera, but for some of these pieces, you know, I can see that the gradient is on a diagonal. So then I know that it definitely has to go with this puzzle. Also, this is the only one where all of the colors meet in the middle. So this is the only puzzle with this kind of muddy gray color. And even though it's not the prettiest, it's actually been like the easiest part to put together because the color differences are like changing so much as you're heading out into each different hue. So up at the top, you can see that since I already pulled out all of the green pieces, I was able to separate the pieces into cool colors and warm colors. And I also pulled out all of these really light pieces, which are this kind of light gradient behind the main gradient. That's honestly what I'm the most worried about because the color differences are gonna be so slight, but <laughs> I'm not there yet. So far, I'm just gonna focus on the darker colors. Oh, also you can see that I almost finished the edge of this puzzle because this is the only one that has darker colors as edge pieces. So I was able to pull all of those out and get most of them in there. Okay, so it is about 11 o'clock now. I have all afternoon to work on this. So where am I gonna go from here? I'm definitely gonna try to finish up all of these kind of muddy gray colors in the middle here. I also feel like I can start pulling some of these bright magenta pieces because that color never shows up in this puzzle. All we have is like a little bit here and then a little bit um, down here. So I'm loving this. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. Let's get right back to it. All right, so all of that was only about two hours and I've already made so much progress. 
I'm really not having any trouble with these puzzles at all. You can see I'm probably gonna finish at least the inside of this one today. And I got a lot more of these stripes filled in over here. This one, we have these two really big gradients. So I feel like I'm probably gonna save those for last. But if you look closely, you can see that this puzzle is like a little more pastel than, uh, than this one. This one's a little darker and a little more saturated. So from here, I think I'm going to try to start pulling all of these kind of bright orange pieces, which will go along here. And then also there's like little sections down here. And so when I'm looking through these pieces, I really am just looking for the most saturated, like orange pieces that I can find. And then as you pull them out, then like as I keep going back and forth, then the next ones that look the most saturated compared to everything else will stand out. And so that's how you make your way across the gradient. I also think I can start pulling any of these yellow pieces that still have a little bit of green in them. Some of those will also go over here and up here because on this puzzle, the yellow is just gonna get more and more orange. So anything that has green in it is not part of this gradient right here. Also, how crazy is it that this whole corner technically is not connected yet? Like, look, this doesn't actually connect and I'm still missing one edge piece up there that I just cannot find. And then a few more over here that are pretty light. And so they're getting mixed up with like the edge pieces over here, but hopefully soon I'll get all of that connected. All right, we are up to, uh, what is this? Day four, I think. <laughs> so as you can see, I worked on it all afternoon yesterday and I got all of the purples and blues completely finished. I also entirely finished this puzzle. I mean, the inside part, I haven't done the lighter gradient around the border, but all of the darker colors on the inside, completely done. Which is gonna make today a lot easier because as I finish up the yellows and oranges and pinks, I only have to work between two puzzles instead of three. So it's not even 9 a.m. right now. I'm getting a really early start today. So I don't think I'm gonna have any problem finishing all three puzzles at some point today. All right, I'm so excited. Let's get back to it. So here's a little trick that I've been using every so often. So since this is a gradient going from that color up to this color, all of the pieces in the row are the exact same color. So I can just grab this piece and then bring it over to all of the pieces that I have left and literally just sort of color match to try to find all of the matching pieces. And there we go. I think I found all three of them. <laughs> and look what I just found, my last edge piece. How did this take me so long to find? Like everything was all laid out. Why did I not see that until literally 
right now. Ah, so satisfying. Okay, I was worried that was actually missing, but it's not, it's here. I just finished the cube. This was by far the hardest part of the puzzle so far. And then this puzzle is almost entirely done. I'm just missing three pieces, which are mixed in with all of these light pieces up here. But I think I should be able to find them pretty easily. So let's take a look. There's one. It even has the little sliver of blue on the side. I can't believe I missed that before. I believe this piece looks a little darker than all the surrounding pieces. And I think this piece is a little more gray than all of the rest of them. All right, here we go. Piece number one, piece number two, and... There it is, our first entirely complete puzzle. All right, I just took a little lunch break, but now it is time to tackle all of these really light pieces. This is the part that I'm the most nervous about because the color difference in these pieces is gonna be so much less than in the darker pieces. Luckily, it's a really bright day out, so I have a lot of light to be able to see these colors as accurately as possible, but I'm not gonna lie, I'm really intimidated. All right, so I actually decided to start with these light yellows because if we look at the pictures, you can see that there's the least amount of inside pieces here in this yellow section because these go basically all the way to the edge and that again goes all the way to the edge. So I figure I'm gonna start here and then work my way up and down. And I think I'm gonna try to fill in all of the inside pieces first because I have all of this to work off of. And then I'm going to end with all of the edge pieces. All right, here is the last inside piece of this puzzle and the last inside piece of that puzzle. All right, so the insides are completely finished. All that is left is the edge. And now that I have all of these to work off of, I feel like the edge is gonna go on pretty quickly.
Oh my gosh, I can't believe I did it. The puzzles are finished. That was probably the best challenge I've ever done on this channel. That was so much fun. <laughs> Okay, so my total time was 14 hours and 10 minutes. And can we just take a minute to appreciate how beautiful these puzzles are? But I do have one thing to double check. I need to flip all of them over to make sure that those dots I put on the back are correct and that I got every single piece in the right puzzle. Okay, I think these are solid enough to stay together. Let's see. Oh, okay, there's one. Oh man, I'm seeing all red dots on this one. I'm seeing all purple dots here on this one and I'm seeing no dots at all over here. So I think I did indeed get every single piece in the correct spot. Okay, and now I have to try to flip them back because I have not actually shot all of the final close-ups and final shots yet. Oh, thank God. Okay, I don't have to solve all the puzzles all over again. <laughs> So I know some of you guys might be wondering, do all three puzzles have the exact same cut? And can you like rearrange all of the pieces between them? And the answer is that yes, they do have the same cut. So, you know, it's the same shape piece one right after the other across all three puzzles. But what happens when you cut puzzles is that sometimes they end up like slightly shifted. So you can see that the tab, the bottom tab of this middle puzzle is bigger than the other two. And I did a lot of experimenting here. What I found is that this middle puzzle must have been like a little shifted in the die cut because these pieces just don't fit into the other two puzzles. But the bean puzzle and the striped puzzle are close enough that if you really kind of wiggle them in there, the pieces can be interchangeable. Okay, so in my last video about the puzzle competition in Spain, I talked about how interesting it was that Kristen used the strategy of doing the edge last after doing the entire middle. And I know some of you guys are gonna be like, why did you think that was so weird? You literally just did that here. But the difference is in the puzzle that she was doing, there's a lot going on on the edge, so it would be relatively easy to do the edge first. Whereas with these puzzles, all of the interesting stuff is happening here in the middle. So I knew from the beginning that I'd be working from the inside out. Okay, so I was really proud of myself that I only had to sort by piece shape once and it was only with these like light pink tan pieces up at the top. But besides that, I was able to do the entire thing just by color and not by sorting by piece shape. So I'm really happy about that. I will say that the piece cut in this puzzle is not the most unique. Um, there are a lot of false fits. So you really do have to mostly work off of two edges rather than one. But a little trick is that you should always look at the corners of the puzzle pieces because if it's correct, the corners will line up perfectly. And if it's not correct, you know, it'll be slightly off. 
Also, I just have one more uh, critique of these puzzles, which is that I had an extra piece. <laughs> I was so confused. So you can see it is this piece that is right here on the side of the rectangle and you can see the exact spot where, um, you know, it matches up with its duplicate piece. So I guess someone out there is uh, missing this piece, but I don't want you guys to like bash soonness for this. Like it happens with all kinds of puzzles. And the other two puzzles that I got were perfectly fine. I've also done another two puzzles from her from a different line. And both of those were perfectly fine as well. So I'll be honest. I mean, you could tell from the beginning of the video, I thought that this might be really frustrating. I really wasn't sure how well this challenge was going to work out, but this was so much fun. If you're looking for another gradient puzzle challenge, like if you've already done the 5,000 piece gradient puzzles, um, I highly recommend getting these, mixing them together and trying this for yourself. I will say just like uh, the big gradient puzzles, you do need really good lighting and really good color vision to be able to do this. And speaking of color vision, I've been playing this game on my phone, which if you don't wanna shell out for these puzzles is like sort of along the same lines. I've talked about I Love Hue on this channel before and they actually came out with a sequel, I Love Hue 2. The entire point of this game is literally just putting colors in order and it is so much fun. It's so satisfying. I can literally sit there for hours, just like working my way through all of the levels. And it feels like such good practice for puzzles like this. So let's take a quick look at the other two soonness puzzles that I've already done because I loved both of them as well. So I like this one a lot. Um, I love the colors. I think the pattern was really fun, but this one is probably my favorite puzzle that I've done all year. The illustration is so cute and there are so many different colors that it is like the perfect difficulty level for a jigsaw puzzle. Also something that's interesting is that she's using a different cut for these puzzles. You can see that all of the cut lines are a lot more almost like wiggly, I would say, compared to this puzzle. And these are definitely much more unique, so I didn't have any false fits. I mean, that's also because there's a lot more different stuff going on than just a gradient of colors. But still, I just wanted to mention both of these and tell you guys how much I really liked them. Also, this is another one where there's so much going on on the inside that once again, I did the border last. All right, so once again, I just want to say a huge thank you to ThreadUp for sponsoring this video and giving me an excuse to talk about secondhand clothing. <laughs> Remember that you can use my code PUZZLES35 for 35% off your first order and free shipping. So I'm gonna have the link to get these puzzles uh, right down below in the description. Let me know in a comment if this is a challenge that you would wanna take on. I have a friend who's colorblind and he looked at it when I was like halfway through and he was like, this is the most stressful thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm over here like, just putting my colors in order for hours and hours on end. All right, your code word for the comments is colorful and that'll be it from me. So happy puzzling and I'll see you all in the next one.